Kelly. Hi. Welcome to the program. How are you? Thank you very much for inviting me. It's nice to be here. Uh, Ambassador, the first ever Swedish style exhibition has been organized here in New Zealand. How does it showcase Sweden to New Zealanders? Well, we have uh, three wonderful exhibitions here. Uh, one is called Ten Visions of Sweden, and it is uh, uh, showing the soul of a nation through the dresses, through the way people dress. Then we have uh, one exhibition about uh, Swedish innovations, everything from the zipper to uh, uh, automatic screwdrivers and so on. And then we have another exhibition with Swedish artists and handicrafts uh, from Sweden, uh, many of these Swedes living in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And then we also have a lot of other ingredients in this week, of course, with music, symposia, and dinner, Swedish food, and so on. Ambassador mm -hmm. uh, Karen, what differentiates Sweden from the rest of its European neighbors? Well, uh, we uh, uh, tend to think that because Sweden is located in the northern Europe, northern part of Europe, and New Zealand is located very down south, uh, we are very uh, separated, but also similar in many ways. We love nature in Sweden, you do that in New Zealand too. We are very sporty people, health-oriented, and like uh, to have a clean environment and so on. I was touching on from the European... Uh, I understand. Well, from a, we are rather similar with other European nations, but uh, of course every country has its uh, particularities, yes. So what? What is that uniqueness that separates Sweden? Well, I think uh, that uh, we, we uh, like to think about ourselves like being caring, like uh, caring for human rights and caring for each other. And also I think we are maybe a bit influenced by the dark winter nights and so on. So we like to have a very cozy indoors atmosphere. I made parties like some communities getting together, okay. some individuals yeah. and then you know they are some sort of organizing climate parties. I'm oh. not talking about political. No, no, but uh, just to get to know each other you mean? Is, yeah, yeah, okay, all on, right. On that sort of line in terms of conserving, sustaining okay. the environment. Okay, yes, I think that is uh, a very uh, active trend in Sweden with conserving uh, nature and energy and so on. We are, for example, building our houses very well with uh, double or triple glasses on the windows and so on. And uh, energy is expensive, so we have to conserve and save where we can. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we want to show the New Zealanders a little maybe, how to build and conserve. And you have also very good plans in uh, climate, trying to combat climate change. Mm -hmm. uh, could you briefly outline some of the achievements of your country, like we you know Sweden is synonymous with founding of the Nobel Prize, yes. the musical group ABBA, yes, yes. Beyond Gold, the tennis sensation of the 80s. I mean, like, could you outline briefly your country's achievements? Well, the Nobel is, of course, something that we are very famous for. And uh, every year on the 10th of December, it's a big party in Stockholm at the town hall when the Nobel Prizes are giving out. And uh, that gives us recognition all over the world. And uh, I think it's a very nice celebration of the achievement of science and so on. So um, we want to continue with that. Then, uh, of course, the sports sensation is uh, something you have in New Zealand also. And we were lucky with Björn Borg and a number of other tennis players. And we are good at ice hockey and uh, other games. So, And then, of course, the Swedish uh, music sensation with ABBA and Roxette and all these groups that have come after. And I know that uh, New Zealanders love ABBA still because I've been here to see the musical Mamma Mia in Auckland and it was very, very popular. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, in terms of culture, trade, and other areas, what is the relationship of your country with New Zealand? Well, uh, we have uh, about uh, 70 Swedish companies here that do trade in uh, New Zealand. All the big companies are here, like Volvo, Scania, Saab, Electrolux, Atlas Copco, 
Ericsson and so on. Uh, but we also have some trade between our two countries in uh, we buy a lot of wine from New Zealand for example and we buy lamb and uh, uh, food stuff and so on but we want to increase that and that's why we have a seminar this week called Export to Sweden where we want to meet young New Zealand entrepreneurs and companies and uh, to discuss with them how they could increase their export to Sweden also. Mm -hmm. Is Sweden looking something in particular from New Zealand? Well, I think we have uh, uh, possibilities in many areas. One of them may be in the IT industry, in the entertainment industry, and uh, also sustainability. And sustainable cities is something that we are very good at in Sweden. And I know that in Auckland that is being discussed now to better the infrastructure and so on. So that's something that we could work together on. Now, from purely agriculture as its base, Sweden has made a name for itself in functional design, social and environmental protection. Could you expand on that? Well, I think uh, that uh, uh, we are a relatively small population. We are 9 million people, twice as many as in New Zealand, and we have a large number of big companies and they need to get new markets so they need to sell outside of Sweden and that is one reason why we have been exporting so early so that is uh, one way of getting new markets and that's why we have companies who have been for 100 years in New Zealand already for over 100 years yes and uh, could you name those companies well for example Atlas Copco and Ericsson are very old here uh, and uh, they started out on the world market very early and uh, that has helped the, with the uh, communications and so on and with the trading. Like New Zealand now is trying to open up new markets also outside of New Zealand and we want to be part of that cooperation with you. And now, what objective do you hope to achieve in your tenure here in New Zealand as your country's ambassador? Uh, well, uh, I wish for more people to get, become friends, for more businesses, more joint ventures. And this Swedish style event that I've initiated here in Auckland is the biggest Swedish manifestation ever in New Zealand. And I hope that many people become friends through this, that many new business contacts are created so that we can continue more business and more friendship. And uh, with the modern times of internet and so on, I think that's going to be possible. Challenges uh, do you foresee for Sweden in the immediate future? Well, I think uh, the climate change issue uh, is a big thing. Sweden is going to be uh, president of the European Union the last half of 2009. During that time, also, the big climate conference will take place in Copenhagen. And energy conservation and uh, combating climate change is a big, big issue in the Swedish government right now. So I think these are some of the challenges to work together with our European partners and also with the other uh, like-minded countries on this, like New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Have you been facing any impediments to achieving your objectives here in New Zealand in terms of uh, getting robust relation, business relations established? No, on the contrary. It's wonderful to get to know Kiwis. It's very easy to get hold of uh, people in government and businessmen. And uh, during this week, we have fantastic cooperation with many, many local organizations, with the universities and the Chamber of Commerce, and uh, with the uh, New Zealand government also. And of course, New Zealand has just opened an embassy in Stockholm. And we are very happy for that. So that's going to be easier for us in the bilateral relations also in the future. And that's why we are very eager to show how interested we are in New Zealand and in the relations by putting on this big show. And my hope is that many Kiwis come to all our events during this week. Tomorrow is a fantastic uh, music evening, for example, at the Museum of Auckland. 
at 7 o'clock with Swedish entertainers. And during all week, it's uh, Swedish uh, gastronomic highlights at the Hilton, so people can come and eat Swedish food also. In general, uh, could you give us a picture of what sort of diversity, what sort of ethnic diversity your country has to showcase to the world? Well, uh, ethnic diversity we have a lot because uh, we have a very open refugee policy in Sweden. So we have a lot of refugees uh, living with different cultural background, with different ethnicity, from different African countries, from uh, conflict areas uh, in Iraq, Iran, and the Middle East, and so on. So uh, thanks to that, we have better food, more variety, and so on, and better culture. No. What do you have to say about the current global crisis afflicting the world, the financial crisis and the illegal wars of Iraq and Afghanistan? Well, it's, uh, I think it's uh, not so easy to put that together in a few words. Of course, we will all be affected by the global uh, crisis, but I think both New Zealand and Sweden have a good regulated bank system, so I hope that we will not be so affected as many other countries that we will manage to get over it and uh, to get back in shape again. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the wars and the occupation of uh, those two countries? Oh, it's uh, nothing I want to go into. I mean, uh, of course we hope that there will be a peaceful solution and uh, very soon, yes. How do you see the occupation of Palestine? What is the Middle East? Also there, uh, I can only say that uh, we Swedes are among the European partners uh, helping to get a uh, uh, negotiated solution to many things. And uh, uh, But my task here is not to talk about the world situation. My task is to talk about Sweden and New Zealand. And what I'm here to do is to promote those relations and uh, create better bilateral understanding between our two countries. Is Sweden trying to uh, appease the New Zealanders into coming on and visiting, discovering Sweden? Absolutely. We want more Kiwis to come to Sweden. And uh, we have this uh, uh, possibility for Swed young Swedish people and young New Zealanders uh, to go on a working holiday visa, which means that they don't need a work permit. They can go for a year and study and uh, work. And I hope that many Kiwis use that opportunity. You can do that up to until the year you are 30 years old. So for young people, it's a wonderful opportunity. Yes. Like for New Zealand citizens and New Zealand permanent residents, how can they visit and live and work and study in Sweden? Well, uh, you can come and study. You apply to university or to school. And you can come as a tourist. And you can also come and apply for a work permit if you have any contacts with a company there, so you, you can uh, go over and try. Absolutely. Do you have any offhand figures as to the level of uh, tourism flow from New Zealand to Sweden? I don't have any figures right now, but what I can tell you is that it has gone up a lot during the last year, which I'm very happy for. Ambassador Karen, thanks for coming on to the program. Thank you so much for inviting me and welcome all the Aucklanders and Kiwis to Swedish Style Event this week. Thank you.